This is the last concept of clocks. It says clock striking, chiming, ticking. These are the different words used uh, at a particular hour. Now, what does it mean? See, when you see a big clock, you know, uh, like Ghantagar, uh, there the clock would, would uh, make some sound, right? And the number of those sounds made or those strikes made is equal to the integer value of the hour, right? So, for example, at 3 o'clock, right? At 3 o'clock, the sound made is called either the strike or the chime or the ticking, just the ticking, right? So at 3 o'clock, the uh, clock chimes three times, right? Just understand three times. Now, what is the meaning of three times here? So suppose it takes uh, uh, at 3 o'clock, it the clock chimes for, the clock chimes for, let's say 15 seconds. What does it mean to you? Let's understand this. So there are three strokes, right? And the total duration of three strokes is 15 seconds. That is what the question is saying. That is what the statement means. At three o'clock, the clock chimes for 15 seconds. It means that the total number of strokes is three. So let's say this is first stroke. This is second stroke. This is third stroke. The total duration from first to third that is 15 seconds. This is what it means. Look at how many gaps are there. So if there are three strokes, there will be two gaps. So one gap and one gap. Okay. Now the total duration of two gaps, that is 15 seconds. This means one gap is equal to 7.5 seconds. Right. I actually, this is where people make mistake. They divide it by three. No, you have to divide the total duration by the number of gaps. So for the same clock, if the question says, uh, how long will it take? How long will this clock, which chimes 15 seconds, how long will this clock, will this clock take to, uh, let's say, strike six o'clock? Six o'clock. Now what happens? Let's see. At six o'clock, the total number of strikes is six, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, what is the number of gaps? Count it. One, 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 one. So it is one, two, three, four, five. So to strike six, the clock has to travel or, or the number of gaps is only five gaps. We have already calculated for this clock, one gap is 7.5 seconds. So five gap will be five into 7.5. That will be 37.5 seconds, right? You have to be a little careful here. So this is a different concept. It is basically a counting concept. Okay, so for example, in the same question, if it was, how much time does it take to strike nine o'clock? Okay, so for nine o'clock, it is nine strikes. Now, nine strikes will mean eight gaps. See, understand the number of gaps will always be one less than the hour, right? Number of gaps will always be one less than the hour. Okay, so nine strikes in eight gaps, that means eight into 7.5. So it is 60 seconds. So it will take 60 seconds to strike nine o'clock, the same clock in this one. Okay, let's take up one question on this. Let's say this question says 15th one at six o'clock, a clock ticks six times. The time between the first and the last tick is 30 seconds, right? So first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. From here to here, total duration is 30 seconds. Count the number of gaps. One, 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 and one. One, two, three, four, five. So 30 seconds is equal to five gaps. Right. So here one gap is equal to 30 by 5. That is six seconds. Right. Now to strike 12 o'clock, what will happen to strike 12 o'clock? You have to be a little careful here. There will be 12 strokes. Right. If you, even if you don't want to draw this, you can simply say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Look at the number of gaps. Right. Number of gaps will be simply one less than the hour. So it is 11 gaps. Right. I'll mark it for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So it is eleven gaps of six seconds each. So it is eleven into six. That is, it will take sixty six seconds to strike twelve o'clock in this question. All right. So I think this is where we have uh, completed all types of questions of clocks. I would suggest that you repeat 
this entire video at least once more slowly whenever necessary you can pause if you still have any doubt or problem you can always get back to us please understand that i have taken different methods while doing different questions like for uh, being together and for uh, being opposite to each other we use directly the formula for angle but for right angle we used a different method right for uh, uh, for uh, this uh, clock losing and gaining we have used two methods okay so you just go through repeat everything if you still have any trouble you can always get back to us right uh, so this is where i'll end this session thank you so much god bless you take care happy preparation